Hey everybody, it's the Hey Poopy Podcast, What That Booty Do, from poop to pleasure to health, hosted by me, Ellen. And me, Dave, two curious people removing the stigma from your stinker. You're probably asking yourself, why do we do this? Because we love laughing, learning all about butts and helping them be the best they can be. And on today's episode, we have the one and only Scott Hazelton, partner of the world famous Hazel Honosuckle burlesque legend and Scott dished on all his things he had trouble related with stomach issues let's just say to lactose intolerance to greasy a mixed diagnosis if you will with Crohn's disease for it lasted I believe 11 years Oof. yeah a decade of suffering many many colonoscopies way before the age of 45 and uh, learning a lot of hard lessons but uh, listen to this episode to hear more like stories like this and I'm in the bathroom and I, at this point, still didn't know, you know, because I hadn't been diagnosed yet. This was part of the diagnosis process. So I still don't know what's the matter with me. And I'm in the bathroom and I'm pooping. And what comes out is a long, slender, <laughs> perfectly snow white oh. piece of shit. But I thought it was a tapeworm. Oh. I thought, this is what's been wrong with me. Ollie. I must have a tapeworm. I'm passing a tapeworm. And just as I am about to scream out for my mother, I remember I had drank a barium milkshake. <laughs> and, you know, it, it just, it was so absurd. And they don't warn me that I passed something Snow White. Yeah. You know, that would have been a nice heads up. Yes. So it's a learning experience. Scott had to go down memory lane with some of this stuff, and he was just sharing. He was very thoughtful, very sharing, and um, a couple of funny little things are, that passed throughout this conversation we had. So check it out; you'll enjoy it. And if you want to hear more about, say, me or Ellen or the show, visit HeyPoopyPodcast dot com, and you can get all the info you need right at your fingertips. Yes, our merch, our Patreon, our cartoons, and so much more. And on to the shit show. Hey, Poopy, how you doing? Hey, Poopy, how you doing? I'm uh, you know, I'm just, you know, trying to find a place with like-minded people to talk about like-minded things, about me, or about poop and stuff. Hey, Poopy, how you doing? Hey, Poopy, how you doing? Oh man, what's this right here? Is this, this is a podcast about who? Welcome back, everybody. It is dump day, and you know what that means. <laughs> this is the Hey Poopy podcast with Dave and Ellen, and this is episode 188, but it'll be always number two to us, our favorite number. We have a very special guest today. We have Scott Hazelton, who I was Hello. just hanging out with in Las Vegas, and he started telling me some fabulous stories, and I was like, stop right there, sir. You will be booked on the show. You you got the goods. Please come on. So everybody, welcome Scott to the show. And Scott, before we go into all these epic stories, we like to check in with our guests first. How have you been? pooping recently i had a couple of rough ones i drank way too much the night before last <laughs> uh i was in san diego visiting friends uh Aww. very very my my uh really really close friend i met her in middle school we've been friends for more years than i think i care to admit and uh she's married to a lovely generous man who enjoys fine cocktails and wine and uh yeah i definitely shouldn't have uh, gone as hard as i did <laughs> and then I had a nice six hour car ride back from San Diego oh, God. and, you know, made it, made it through <laughs> a lot of coffee to keep the eyes open. And, uh, and then, yeah, yeah, it was, uh, it was a cleanse. It was, it was, uh, <laughs> it was an exorcism. It was an unplanned cleanse. <laughs> Are you somebody who gets after a night of crazy drinking more diarrhea? More diarrhea. Yeah. I was, I was just talking about this. I virtually never throw up, but, uh, I do clear the other way. Yeah. yeah. That'd be yeah. crazy if you yeah. drank all that and you had the most perfect solid shit. <laughs> Some kind of weird thing like reversal. You're like, wow, that's, that's interesting. Okay. Yeah. Well, sometimes when I drink, it dehydrates me, so then I can't shit. It constipates me. Mm. Yeah, that's why I'm wondering. That I've, I don't know that I've ever experienced constipation in my entire life. Oh, you blessed. But it's, I mean, this is this is part of, kind of actually a good segue into into how this all started for me, which is that. Can we just oh, go into oh, our yeah, quick absolutely. check in first, sure. Dave? How have you been pooping? All right, I actually went right before the show, so. 
Oh. That was fun. At one point, Your I'm only like, well, poop I of probably the day? Hit. No, no, I've been going to the bathroom like all day. I think I had, I had, I've been doing this, I've been eating, I've been doing this intermittent fasting thing for a month now. And so I eat at noon and I'd stop at eight. This morning I had, or this morning, this afternoon I had, I just had some eggs with uh, kale and <laughs> it's a tiny bit of feta cheese. And I think the feta cheese was like this older. I come to that sniff, I'm like, ah, that'll be fine. And then I think that kind of fucked me up a little bit. So all day I've been on and off the bowl. But uh, yeah, right before this thing started and I was like, ooh, am I going to have time to hit the, turn the zoom meeting on? <laughs> But it did. I, I made it. Turn it on from the toilet. Yeah. So it's it's been like a it's been a lot of activity today. I don't even know. I just lost count. I don't even know. Probably five Oof. times at least. I've gone. So we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> How about you? Anna? I I went four times today, and all four of those times, from the minute I woke up this morning, I felt the urge to have to poop, and each one of those times was a Bristol one or two. I just made tiny little nuggets. I don't know why. It would mean Valentine's Day was last night. I did a fair amount of drinking and it goes back to me talking about sometimes when I drink, I get constipated, but it was so aggravating and I would like to enjoy a, a solid poop sometime in my future. Not the one, just these little rabbit pellets. I'm sure what happen. I, I'm hoping for That's tomorrow. The it's the drinking, you know, the drinking. I, sometimes I'm like, should I even drink anymore? <laughs> I, don't, I yeah. barely drink during the week anymore. But I, when I do now, it's just like, Jesus Christ. It just hits I know a lot the harder. answer is no, yeah. or at the very least, I should drink less. <laughs> but I just don't know what what I would do with my time and, and socializing. You know, like yeah. I don't know who I would hang out with. Yeah. <laughs> But the actual like act much. of drinking is so much fun. It's just all yeah. the shit that comes with it or lack of shit that comes with <laughs> it. You know, like, yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty much on wine at this point. Like, I don't mm. think I really drink anything else. And I'm only drinking on the weekends now. And it's been like, but then, of course, it's like, I'll have one more. And the next thing you know, are like, well, I haven't drank all week. And you're like, oh, my God, I have another one. And the next thing you know, I'm like, oh, my God, I'm completely <laughs> fucked up. <laughs> and that's I go through kind of cycles of being able to to really like, oh, I'll just have one or two and behave. And then I'll do that for a while. And then something will happen where suddenly I spike and I'm like, if I go out, I'm going to have seven. Yep. <laughs> yeah. And I seem to be I seem to have hit that upswing recently and i'm hoping that i i go back down pretty quickly because yeah oh, i don't yeah. want another day like yesterday I, we <laughs> played the, the most amazing game of monopoly which sounds really nerdy but it got so good and my my neighbor just kept like pouring this amazing red wine this amazing mm. multiple from multiple Chiano. delicious and i got i woke up the next morning and like everything not hung over but just you know that, those light spins you get where you're like whoa mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah it was a yeah. lot of that so i'm, I'm trying not to correct the ship you know write it a little bit yeah i love wine as dave said he's more of a wine person but i realize that if i just stick with tequila i'm going to be a much happier person mm. tequila is a lot yeah, for sure tequila is a easier i feel like hang <laughs> but wine tastes so good wine is delish i like it yeah all. yeah so, yeah. But this is not a show about drinking. It's a show about <laughs> Scott and his many stories on where he's been on his roller coaster of poopage or not poopage. Yeah. Uh, so, Scott, before, though, we go into your poopage, do, would you like to tell the audience anything about you besides your poo? No, I mean, maybe some, I mean, stuff will come out naturally as I, as I talk about. Okay. The, keep it uh, anonymous. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. I keep it lightly anonymous. Yeah, you know. Uh, I do a little bit of writing, but I write under a pen name and I kind of oh. feel like. This may be. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get it. I totally get it. The, yeah, yeah. I mean, I introduced but, you as even your fake name. Yeah, it was so true. <laughs> How many fake names do you have, sir? That I that I use with any regularity is just the two. Just the two. One is Scott Hazelton is to support my wife's burlesque career. Mm -hmm. and that's where that comes from. And then the pen name is the professional uh, pen name. And then I was thinking about it and I have like a variety of like nicknames and things that I've like cycled through over the course of my life. And it all stems from the fact that my high school, my graduating class was only like 260 kids and we had six kids named Scott. <laughs> yeah, None of us ever went by Scott. No. Yeah. We had a lot of Dave's in my school too. So and no, this mm -hmm. always your last name you relate. or some kind of like variation of that. <laughs> Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Just give you guys numbers at that point. Just be easier. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it's crazy how long those nicknames stick too. 
Oh, like everyone from my high school still calls me the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Well, that's hilarious. I don't want to digress, but I think we should start getting into this. Some of these sure. Um, stories. Sure. So my entire family has like some minor stomach issues. And uh, and that's kind of important because of how ridiculous my parents' decision making was <laughs> when I started having some stomach issues. Right. Uh-oh. The entire family has these couple of stomach issues. Did they test me for those issues when I started uh, waking up every single day with diarrhea and gas pains? No, they did not. Sounds so about right. What, yeah. So what happened <laughs> around around the time I was like 14, I started waking up most days feeling pretty, pretty sick. And then uh, freshman in high school, my mother would wake me up every single day with uh, two Pepto-Bismo and a Modium AD and a Phazine. Jesus. And so take those right away. First thing in the morning, I would chip my brains out for the next like 30 minutes. Oh, my God. I would get something to eat and uh scarf it down and be iffy 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 and then in the last possible moment i would make a game time decision as to whether or not i could make it to the bus Oof. and if i couldn't my mom would drive me but it, uh, all, every single day i usually made the bus but it was you know sometimes it was like no this is not i'm not gonna do it i felt like crap on the bus i would, I would sit holding my pants like away from my body a little bit oh my and goodness. then by the time i got to school i usually felt fine Wow. So it was every single morning from like, I forget what time we had to wake up for high school, like 745 or whatever yeah. it was from, from then to like around like, you know, uh, the end of first period, I felt terrible. And then all of a sudden I felt fine and I was starving because I had just completely emptied, emptied my guts out. And, uh, and so I would go to the cafeteria because this was the first year that we could buy our own food. And every single day I was buying cheese pizza and dipping it into uh, Thousand Island dressing. <laughs> oh my God. And, uh, that and, hurts my stomach right now. Yeah. And I felt completely fine <laughs> until I woke up the next day. Oh. But so I was, and it, that's what it was. I, it turns out, you know, this is, this is spoiler alerts because it took several years for people to figure out what was actually wrong with me. In fact, it took 11 years. To Jesus. Out. Yeah. Turns out I was lactose intolerant. And I have a weak stomach and can't handle fried foods. So like, oh. that's, that's it. My mother has the same problem. My father has the same problem. Both my sisters have the same problem. Their lactose intolerance started a couple of years earlier than mine, you know, in, in, in the age range, they all started having issues with dairy around the age of 12. Mm-hmm. I didn't, I hung on for another couple of years. <laughs> and so they're like, well, we know it's not lactose intolerance because it would have started oh, no. two years ago. So we'll eliminate that from the list right away. I wonder, if it's like hormonal because like girls go through hormones a little bit mm. sooner you know be, and, and i'm yeah. thinking like if you started this at 14 yeah. you know but also oh, your whole family's lactose intolerant and they had Pretty cheese much. in your my house dad can, my dad can eat a little bit well what it, what it was it wasn't at the house it was at school yeah so yeah. every time i was eating yeah. pizza at school but we didn't have any dairy in the house so all the food you ate at yeah. home you were fine yep oh. yeah so it's usually fine on the weekends Oh yeah. my God. That Oof. sucks. And then, uh, yeah, yeah. And so they, they, it came to a head. I wound up going to the hospital Jeez. when, uh, I was on a nature hike. We did a five day, we did a, there was a wilderness survival program at my high school and it was awesome. Oh. And one of the things that we did was a five day hike where you have a frame backpack, you have your tent, you have everything you're going to need for the, those five days on your own back and you're hiking through the the mountains in New Hampshire. I made it to like day three and then, you know, my stomach crapped out on me and uh, I was shaken and I looked very frail and the the teachers were like, all right, we got to get you out of here. I didn't want to leave, but the same token, I can't make everyone else wait a couple of hours to see if I feel better. They're going to lose daylight. Yeah. So uh, the decision was made and I had to go home and I'd been told by a doctor at one point that if you, if you, and uh, I forget what, it, I think it was like seven times in a day. If you poop more than seven times in a day, they tell you to talk to a medical professional <laughs> or they did oh to me when I was a kid. So uh, I hit, I hit like nine or 10 that day. And we decided to like go to a, go to a doctor. And this began me actually seeing doctors to try to figure out what was wrong with me. Now I'm from the woods on the mass New Hampshire border. 
And uh, virtually everyone that lives in my little, you know, my, my hometown at that time was mostly of English, Irish, or Scottish kind of ancestry. There wasn't a lot of other people uh, to, to speak of. And what few there were would be like me, like Eastern European or whatever. But it's a very small town, in the, you know, uh, former mill town from like way back in the day. And, uh, and this is important because if you were to just glance at me and hear my real last name, you would think I was Jewish. And Crohn's disease is prevalent amongst Jewish populations. Oh. And there are not a lot of Jewish people living in my town. So the doctor saw my symptoms, thought I was Jewish, oh God. and said, we think you might have Crohn's disease. Let's check you for that. <laughs> and so I had to have a, a GI series done. Upper and lower? And it, upper and lower. And during the, the lower... They found an abnormality to my bowel, which correlates, but is not causally connected to Crohn's disease. A lot of people with this abnormality also have Crohn's disease. So they said, well, you know, like we're looking at you, you got the bowel, you got the, the, it all lines up. Nailed it. Nailed it. Nailed it. <laughs> we're done here. Yeah. We're done here. <laughs> and my doctor was lovely. I really liked her, you know, like she was great. But, uh, you know, again, if you don't see something in your medical practice, uh, you're diagnosing off of a textbook you read however many years ago. Mm -hmm. And you're you're playing some of these, uh, uh, I guess, Bayesian kind of is that the right term when uh, Bayes, Bayesian probabilities, you know, like, OK, if X is present and Y is present, then the odds of C being the reason is, is sure. 35 percent, 40 percent, whatever. So and then I started feeling better. Because when you have Crohn's disease, along the long list of things you cannot eat includes don't eat dairy, don't eat fried foods. Those two things can, can cause a flare up and cause an attack. They gave me, I was taking nine Asacol and two Ciproflaxin every single day. Jesus. For wow. like 11 years. Oh my God. The, wow. I think it was the Cipro. One of the two uh, you could not take with a multivitamin. And uh, uh, and then you were also, I was also told I can't have any roughage and I can't have any uh, fruit because oh, fruit Jesus. is too acidic and roughage like lettuce and, and, and most fruit, I'm sorry, most uh, vegetable can, can, has too much fiber and can cause, again, can cause an attack. So, so like meat, was, potatoes and pasta. Yeah, 100% that. And yeah. to the degree that like I had a friend who uh, my friend Brett called it, he, he could never remember what, what it was that they thought I had. And so he's just like, yeah, you know, you got that weird, you got that weird chicken and potatoes diet. All you can eat is chicken <laughs> and potatoes. <laughs> You're like, yeah, exactly. That's, um, that's in the uh, medical <laughs> journals. So, did yeah. you get scurvy from not being able well, to? <laughs> I bruised so readily when Hazel and I got together. She once gave me a hickey on my cheek and oh. on my ear because it was just that easy to make me bruise. Oh, my goodness. And, and I would get these like very yellow, jaundicey looking bruises as a result of this because I, I basically was vitamin deficient for that. Yeah. Time. And yeah, so uh, what happened what, what in the end was that I moved to New York City where there is a Jewish population and where GI specialists do diagnose Crohn's disease. I walked into the doctor the first time he looked at me, he goes, you don't have Crohn's disease. Huh? You don't have it. And I'm like, no, no, I've had it for like 11. Like I was diagnosed at 17. Like, he's like, no, you don't, you don't have Crohn's disease. Trust wow. me. We'll send you for another, you know, upper or lower GI or whatever. And then, uh, and see if I'm right. But I'm telling you right now, you don't have Crohn's disease. I go do the test. Don't have Crohn's disease. Oh so I can stop taking this medicine. Yeah, you can stop taking that medicine. No, not only can you, you need to stop taking that medicine. So That's I insane. stopped taking it. And then all of a sudden I could eat salad again. No. So for the next like year, all I wanted all the time was just salad, 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 salad. Because all the lettuce, all the carrots, all yeah, the Yeah, because your body wanted, was wanted. like, oh my yeah. God, nutrients. Like, what's this? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This <is> crunchy wow. <laughs> leaf. Never, never had another problem. Since then. Yeah. I mean, on the grand scheme of things, yes, every now and again, I'll accidentally consume some dairy and get sick or whatever, but like, it's no big deal. Right, right. <laughs> Literally nothing. Well, compared to all those, all those pills, Jesus. Yeah. That's well, when I made major life decisions 
based around the fact that I needed, I think, at the, I think when I graduated from college, my pills without insurance would cost uh, $1,300 a month. Jesus. So every decision I made was built around maintaining insurance. Gotcha. I need to maintain insurance. I can't go a month without insurance. Yeah, yeah. And I would take terrible jobs. I couldn't pursue more interesting freelance work. I had to have that insurance or otherwise right. I was, you know, thought I was going to be homeless, you know, but um, yeah. Yeah. God. Now, Which some of this like, stuff, when you graduate college, besides the insurance thing, you mm-hmm. barely make any money. <laughs> like, yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, God, Hazel and I used terrifying. to go to the grocery store and calculate the net weight per dollar of every food item we were buying. And I would tell her things like, okay, so uh, this week we're going to have sandwiches every day for lunch, but we can only afford to put two slices of cold cuts on our sandwiches. Otherwise we're going to run out before the end of the week. Wow. So yeah. Yeah. But um, and didn't yeah. you also tell me that you, you did a bunch of colonoscopies too? Oh yeah. I was doing colonoscopy every year from the age of 17 to, to uh, like 20 something. And then when I moved to New York, I kept going back to, to Massachusetts and seeing my old doctor there. And some of that was laziness. It wasn't until my parents finally like moved out of Massachusetts, moved to Florida that I stopped going home and had to find doctors in New York. And that's when that, wow. that all, that all began. The, uh, yeah. So the first time I had a colonoscopy, I thought they tell you, you know, you have to stop eating at a certain point and you have to start drinking this fluid. It's the worst. And if you've, had a colonoscopy lately, it's like two 16 ounce glasses of this stuff. It's disgusting. I've had it's, yeah. it's so disgusting. <laughs> in in uh, the late 90s, it wasn't two glasses, it was a glass every five minutes until you drank the entire uh, gallon or three gallons, whatever it was. No, it, it came in one of those big jugs yeah. that had like the spigot on the front that are like long. <laughs> And uh, they tell you to mix it with like crystal light or something to give it a little flavor. And the first one you have is good, but like you can choke it down. <laughs> and, yeah. But then around like glass number eight or nine, it's literal torture. So you kill um, yourself. <laughs> yeah. But we had heard this, and oh, uh, we had heard this, and we thought that. Uh, that the smart thing to do is, oh, I can't go 24 hours without eating or, or, you know, I have to stop eating after 6 p.m. Well, then I'm going to have a big meal to, to satiate myself. And so I won't feel hungry if I can't eat again until what we didn't think was everything in your system is being forced down and out. So the first yep. time I did this, my mom made me a massive chicken dinner with like <laughs> potatoes and stuffing and like I ate. I ate, an, I mean, you know, I ate like a meal, like a, a, a feast. And, uh, and then I had to suffer through that. I had to drink, wind up drinking like every single drop to get it to the point that you're passing the clear liquid. It was Jesus. possibly up there amongst the worst nights of my entire life. Yeah, that's torture. Uh, yeah. And you had to do this every year. So it's not like, yeah, every, like most people who do colonoscopies is like every five or something. Yeah. Yeah. It was like every year. Or so, and, and oh. then they dropped it to every other year. And then, so like it, you know, it stretched. Yeah. I must have had. So how many like, colonoscopies have you had in your lifetime at this point? <laughs> Seven or eight. Oof, in that God. ballpark. Cause they did drop to every other year. After yeah. when I, once I, once I got stable. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, yeah. And then the other, this story is actually a little bit funnier. When you do the upper GI track, uh, you drink this uh, barium milkshake thing. It's disgusting. And, yeah. Also disgusting. <laughs> Chugging that. And, uh, and for whatever reason, I always have these things around holidays. I had to, I had to do this like in the, uh, I was like the couple of days before Thanksgiving was when my appointment was. So I chug this barium milkshake, they do the tests and then it's Thanksgiving and we're at friends of my parents' house and they're like fancy. They live in this huge house and we have to dress up and stuff. And I'm in the bathroom and I, at this point, still didn't know because I hadn't been diagnosed yet. This was part of the diagnosis process. So I still don't know what's the matter with me. And I'm in the bathroom and I'm pooping and what comes out is a long, slender, <laughs> perfectly snow white oh. piece of shit. But I thought it was a tapeworm. Oh, I thought 
this is what's been wrong with me. All I must have a tapeworm. I'm passing a tapeworm. And just as I am about to scream out for my mother, I remember I had drank a barium milkshake <laughs> and, and, you know, it, it just, it was so absurd. And they don't <laughs> warn me that I passed something snow white. Yeah. You know, that would have been a nice heads up. Yeah. Like, well, I love doctors BT for that. Dubs. <laughs> you're going to, yeah. like, you're going to shit out some snow white logs. So like, <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. I did an upper GI. It's perfectly normal. Yeah, right? yeah, I did an upper GI once, like close to twenty years ago. And as I was drinking that stuff, I was also throwing it up in front of on myself because oh. I couldn't oh. hold it down. But yeah. they had to have me keep because they take the pictures yeah. while you're drinking it. And they're like, just keep going. And I'm like, but I'm covered in my own vomit. Like, yeah. it's just pure evil. That's hell yeah. on earth. Yeah. 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 Ugh. I remember being excited when the colonoscopy went from from the the big thing. I think it was called like it was called like Nutley or something like that. N U T L E Y, and then they came out with one. It was called like half Nutley, and it was still a ton of liquid, but it was like half as much. Oof. And I was thrilled by this this like medical advance, and I was smarter by that point. And so like the day leading up to to uh, the prep, I ate nothing but Jello. Oh, yeah. just like oh, it's three meals of jello so it's like quick yeah. to easy to pass you You're know like, like i'm old pro at this <laughs> yeah i had i had a, My, a colonoscopy in the early early aughts and mm-hmm. I thought there was something wrong with me. It turns out nothing was wrong with me, but I just thought like there was something crazy wrong with my that, that area. And uh, I think I got the stuff called, it was like it was Go Lightly, which I, it's ironic <laughs> they call it that. And it was just like you said, it, was, it looked like a giant like bleach bottle. Just that that yeah. sort of like that handled. And I'm like, mm-hmm. I gotta drink this whole thing. It's like, yes. I'm like, that's insane. <laughs> yeah. You're like, none of this is lightly. Oh my God. None yeah. of it was. And you're, at first you're like, okay, this isn't so bad. And then it just like, it just takes over and just like. Like it's just oh, everywhere. Man. It's just constantly coming out of you. And I don't know how people that like were living on their own handled that. It was like, I, you know, I, when this started for me, I was still living with my parents. And when my, what I did was I put like a blanket over my lap and my mom would be coming in and delivering me the next one. Cause, cause you just, you just sit on the toilet. Stop. Yeah. 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 Oof. We brought in, remember those old like 13 inch TVs with a built in VCR? Yes. It was like sitting on the edge of my bathtub. I watched like three full movies while this was going on. It, it's my it's shocking how long, it, even like the new, the, the, when, when I had mine, like the, the new stuff, it really like, I'm like, I cannot believe I'm still going to the bathroom right now. Yeah. And I had to be there by like, <laughs> yes. I had to be there by like 7 a.m. I had to be at the yeah. hospital at 7 a.m. And now it's like 1 in the morning, 1 32, and I got to go to sleep and then wake up. And, and it was, of course, it was snowing. So I had to take a train there. It was like a nightmare. So, yeah. It's, and that, not to make fear in any of our audience. <laughs> Please go get a colonoscopy. It will save you from getting cancer. Do it at 45. I I just turned 45 two weeks ago. I'm trying to work on getting mine done. Scott, you're under the age of 45. Yeah. And you've yeah, already yeah, had was, eight of these yeah, done. Yeah. yeah. And honestly, the, the worst part is the prep. Yeah. Yes. Right. They put you down for the, the other thing. I woke up once. I don't have any memory of it. Apparently, the doctor thought it was very funny. I was asking questions about what I was seeing, and then I nodded back off. <laughs> yeah, the, You're like, I've yeah. done this so often that I'm just going to wake up for it. Yeah. yeah. The first one I <laughs> had what's that? Same thing. What's that? That's, well, that's your large intestine. Oh, what's that? Still your large intestine. Uh-huh. uh-huh. Yeah. What's that? Also your large intestine. I, had a, yeah, they, they, I wasn't fully knocked out, and it was for sure. They had the, they had a giant screen. It was so we got the camera going through here. You weren't fully knocked out. I couldn't feel anything. I was definitely like, no, of course, yeah, I was yeah. like in and out. But it was like I remember same thing. Oh, what's going on here? They're like, oh, we're well, just taking the camera. It was like very calm, you know. Yeah, and yeah. Of course, it's I a just, Tuesday. Though. Yeah. So the, the second one completely. I didn't. I woke. I fell asleep and then woke up in the recovery room. So yeah. But yeah, it's 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 yeah, it's definitely worth doing. Just get it done. The prep is is the worst part. It's as we're talking about it now, we can joke about it, but it's it's like whatever. It's a, it's a thing you got to do. It doesn't take that long. And it's, the prep is much better than it was 20 years ago. Yes. It goes and quickly. Once again, learn from my mistakes. <laughs> Don't eat a big chicken dinner before you have to prep. <laughs> yes. Eat lightly. Like, all right. You're Yeah. Pudding. Actually, you know what? If you have if you have food issues, like you can't digest certain things, it is the perfect day to have that thing. 
<laughs> You're like, You're I'm going to eat some all night cheese. Either way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you might as well get it out. <laughs> I have a large cheese pizza if you're lactose intolerant. Fuck it. You know, it's all coming out. Yeah. So, and when it comes to your lactose intolerance, is it's mm-hmm. like even butter? Because that make does it make it nervous no, I too? Butter. Butter's oh, okay. Because yeah, I'm like butter, going out to restaurants must be nerving. Hard cheeses tend to not trigger it. So like oh. if there's a, what do you call it? Shredded Parmesan on top of something. Don't get me wrong. I still ask to not have it or to have yeah. it on the side. But generally speaking, it doesn't, it doesn't really impact me. But milk, ice cream, cream, anything in that kind of ballpark, a soft cheese. Like I can't do mozzarella. You know, uh, anything in a, in a soft cheese. What about cheese. Like a goat cheese? That, does that affect you more? Goat less? cheeses uh, affect us less. Yeah, actually okay. hazels, heat and goat cheese. But here's the thing, too, is for for so long, these things made me so violently ill. I don't miss them. Yeah. You know. I get that. The first year giving up pizza was hard. You know, being a teenager. Oh, having yeah, to give that's up pizza a rough one. Yeah. You're like, oh, here's but, like uh, a veggie pizza right here. You're like, oh, ah. <laughs> gluten-free, like, nano. Oh, yeah, and also... <laughs> Fake cheeses have gotten much, much better over the last 20 years. They used to be god awful. Oh, yeah. It tastes like <laughs> wet cardboard. They wouldn't melt. You know, I'm like, like, this is not, no. like, what is this? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it was like that old SNL skit with Bill Hader yeah. and Kristen Wiig, almost pizza. Mm-hmm. What is it? You know, <laughs> what is almost it? pizza. Uh, it's like pizza. <laughs> yeah, but what is it? <laughs> Yeah, when I was out in Vegas, Scott and I and Hazel, his wife, went to dinner to an Italian restaurant because we were, what was it called? Not celebrating, but like supporting our friend who was working there. And we both, all three of us laughed at like, because I'm gluten free and they're lactose intolerant. And we're like, what are we going to be able to eat at an Italian restaurant? (laughs) Yeah, yeah. yeah. We figured it out. Yeah. 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 It was delicious. Grilled octopus maybe or... uh... Yeah. <laughs> well, they, they did have a couple of vegan and gluten free stuff on the menu. Oh, and, yeah. And uh, yeah. Yeah. I was actually it, very happy with it. But. We also discussed how I get very frustrated when I tell somebody I'm ve- I'm gluten free oh, and they give me the vegan options. And I'm like, mm-hmm. that doesn't make that always yeah. like, why do you lump both of them in together? And then the same with Scott, you were saying that like you'll order vegan options because, you know, they'll be lactose intolerant. However, yeah. then you might get a piece of chicken or steak or something. And they're like, wait, yeah. I thought you were vegan. <laughs> vegan. Yeah. Or our other favorite one is uh, people assume that anything that needs to be refrigerated is dairy. And uh, so people will ask us very weird questions. We're like, well, what, what can you eat? I can't eat dairy. So you can't eat eggs? No, <laughs> yeah, like, I can eat eggs. Those are definitely not from a cow. Yeah, I can yeah. eat eggs. That comes out of a chicken, I um, believe. <laughs> nay, it trips up a lot of people because it is both needs to be refrigerated and it's white. So there's an <laughs> yeah. assumption that it's milk. Oh, my God. That's yeah. kind of, I, I almost want to, to record that and like make it some kind of like blog diary about that. That's hilarious. I mean, I'm sure it's annoying, but also like you can eat eggs, right? I mean, that's like a, it's like, <laughs> <Yeah>. what? <laughs> oh, man. You're looking yeah. That's people for you. Job. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 And also, most people don't need to know this stuff, right? I mean, like, you know, it's a little bit weird that waiters don't. Yeah. Waiters, I feel like, should know. At a yeah. certain What's point, yeah. I mean, this day, yeah. 2023, especially, like, everybody's got something. <laughs> You know? But also, yeah, yeah. yeah, I mean, in the past decade, I feel like more restaurants have put it's vegetarian, it's vegan, it's gluten free. Yeah. But lactose intolerance is something that I feel like has been around for even longer mm-hmm. than that kind of stuff. And I was thinking with you and Hazel, I'm like, you don't see a restaurant that says also lactose intolerance. Like, yeah, yeah. you can have this non dairy thing that's also has meat in it it's okay you know i've confused the hell out of pizza places many times ordering <laughs> vegan cheese with pepperoni <laughs> they're like what yeah like, uh, <laughs> but sometimes you just want that like i mean i like there's some like vegan things that i really love and i like that as a better option and you just want to mix mm. and match which, which is great about in today's society you can do that you can yeah. most places you can just kind of mix and match and make your own sort of like experience i also really like vegan food generally uh, but I like it best when it's not pretending to be meat. Oh yeah. Like yeah, if you yeah. call it barbecued jackfruit, 
delicious. You call it vegan pulled pork? This doesn't taste anything like pulled pork. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> vegan bacon. It's like, don't call it that. <laughs> no. Like, it's just, you know, no. I get you got to sell it, but it's just like after a while, like, it's that's. <laughs> Who are you selling it to, right? Yeah, I mean, like, true. if anyone's vegan, they know their audience. It's, <laughs> they should. Yeah. You know? I've also told like people, I'm like, yeah, I'm gluten free. And they're like, oh, so no rice and potatoes. And I'm like, I'm not carb free. Yeah. <laughs> like, I still oh, like man. carbs. <laughs> I will yeah, say that people are me, crazy. I can't, I, like you, really greasy, saturated foods like that give me like, but then my doctor in college told me I have a, I have a really weak gallbladder. Cause she's, do you get like really bad stomach aches if you eat fried, like French fried, like really greasy foods? I'm like, yes. She's, yeah. You, this is like, a, it's just part of it. You just know that if you eat that kind of stuff, sometimes you're going to get really sick, not sick, but just, yeah. you're going to feel like you got to take a shit, but it's like, you can't, or you keep going and there's nothing really passes. And uh, it's like a nightmare sometimes. Mm. But you, it's been that you hot have, food. Or you do take a poop. Yeah. You're just, that's what I'm saying. Like, it's just kind of like, it's yeah. one of those things where it just really gets like, oh, it's really, it's, it's really painful. And hot sauce or hot food, spicy food now. Mm -hmm. Like I can't do it anymore. I mean, I, I still I have, I have hot sauce, but it's, I love really spicy food. It's it just wreaks havoc on me now. I can do spicy, and I love spicy, and it's a it's a late late addition to my my palate. Spicy foods, because I grew up in a very in a house. My mom was an excellent cook, but it was in that like very generic American style of cooking. Right. You know that. Uh, that uh, white and black, uh, sorry, no, white and red oh, uh, cookbook um, with the, the black Betty, uh, yes. diamond on it. Is the Betty Crocker one? Or no, I don't know what you're talking or about. Or Better Homes? That. No, it, Better Homes. Yeah. Better yeah. Homes. It's in the Better Homes style. Like that yeah. sort of like, yeah. Uh, American but she would crush traditional. That yeah. But yeah. my dad can't handle any. My, my dad thinks if a little bit of ground black pepper on a dish makes it too spicy. <laughs> <You know? laughs> right. Scott, can we go into some of our regular questions? Sure. Yeah. Fire away. Awesome. Uh, what is your favorite kind of toilet paper? And do you put it on the roll over or under? Oh, definitely over. Okay. Uh, and I'm actually a little aggressive about that. And then <laughs> we're, a, we're a divided household. Hazel likes oh. uh, a uh, rougher, scratchier toilet paper. And I like the uh, cottony, uh, super Fluffy. soft kind. But we bought a, a knockoff of a Japanese toilet not too long ago. Oh, nice. Oh. And so now I don't really care. I'm using way less toilet paper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, now yeah. that you have a bidet. It's the best. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's a game changer. It is that a was... complete game changer. Oh, because you know, when you're when you have diarrhea like every day of your life, you're frequently wiping back there until you are your choices are, well, I haven't gotten all the poop yet, but there's blood. Yeah. yeah. So it's like you're you're trying to like perpetually balance that. Oh. Which is why I like the really cottony type. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I get it. You know? Know, if you're doing that much wiping. Yeah. Jesus. But yeah, yeah. but bidet oh, is great. That's awful. It's good yeah. and bad because well, now... again, this is all stuff that I dealt with now it's 20 years old i'm fine yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> great yeah oh my god but, it's, uh, yeah it's, it's formative it's awesome yeah. having a bidet but then it's like when you travel if i forget to bring my little travel bidet or you're like where's the bidet it like fucks with me i'm like oh my god i have to do this again like let's go back to this dry <laughs> i may need to buy a travel bidet before this trip oh, we're, we're gonna I'm, head to europe uh i'm so i'll send you a link as soon as we're done with this i just right. uh, bought gerald another one because he lost his so mm. yeah yeah, it's the, it's amazing. It'll a total game changer. Yeah. And do you sit or stand to wipe? Oh, uh, sit. Okay. Uh, although you you will usually do one last check after I've stood up. Oh yes. But it's typically a, typically sit. I do the uh, I do this the pronounced lean. Yeah. The lean. Go yes. around the side. Lean to the side. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and do you have any other product? that you like to use besides your bidet and your soft toilet paper for your pooping. It could be supplements, a stool, matches, room spray. Hmm. No, no, nothing, nothing really to speak of anything else. The, uh, we've always had like candles and stuff in bathrooms, you know, when I was growing up, uh, or, uh, what were those little, the, 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 the tea lights, uh -huh. Those were really popular for a minute in the late nineties. Those were always in all of our bathrooms in our, in our house, but as opposed to like other products now, no. I felt like there was one other thing that I did do though. That was, eh, it'll come to me. But, <laughs> and but no. what's the worst bathroom you've ever seen? Oh Jesus. So I remember driving between New Jersey and Boston uh, and having to just stop at a random, random gas station bathroom. Cause I literally could not hold it another moment. 
And uh, this is not a great plug for a place that is actually delicious, but I had eaten a giant potato pancake at Ryan's New York style deli in uh, Connecticut. And I love that place, but a big fried potato pancake uh, with my stomach uh, problems. Uh, So I stopped at this gas station and it had uh, it. Honestly, I would have been more comfortable if someone had been murdered in it. You know what I mean? Like it was just covered in every imaginable thing. And it didn't have a seat. Like someone had stolen the toilet seat or broken it and had it replaced. So you had to do the the hover. The like, you know. But like at that point, there's no choice, right? Like you forced your family off the highway (laughs) because you have to go as soon as possible. I had a high school where they frequently overreacted to problems. And so they took the doors, the doors and the stall doors off of the bathroom by the cafeteria. Why? Yes. Because kids had been smoking there. So they're they're like, they're like, they were like, oh yeah, you didn't even smoke. Well then now we're going to be able to, to, to see if you're smoking from like walking. Like, so you couldn't quite see it if you were just walking by, but essentially it's like pooping in front of an open door oh, yeah. where all of your in a cafeteria are like right there eating yeah. eating eating so i never use that bathroom and teachers would like get into screaming matches with like yell at me and stuff because i i would get dismissed from the cafe to go to the bathroom and then walk right past that bathroom <laughs> this is this is a good story that i think it statue of limitations is inspired i'm not gonna get anyone in trouble wait can i ask really one sure. quick question when you ate yeah. the fried potato how quickly did you have to poo uh i mean we made was it, it like probably like 20 minutes down the highway or something so like it that. was that fast yeah oh wow. yeah wow yeah in the 90s and so the uh at one at one point mcdonald's food got real i mean not that it's cuisine but like it got particularly bad sometime yes. in the late 90s early 2000s yes and if i ate one chicken nugget i'd be i'd be violently ill within the hour jesus and then i remember in the like mid 2000s or something they started using less filler and and less you know some whatever injectable fat they were doing <laughs> and suddenly i could eat chicken nuggets again i mean it's still oh, not wow. good for me I'll, I'll get an upset yeah. stomach but like today if i have six chicken nuggets it's not a great decision but it's not i'm not gonna be <laughs> sick within the hour right, right <laughs> but right. you're not gonna um, have to shit within 20 minutes yeah. of yeah so okay so when please I was, tell the story sorry when i was a sophomore in high school i just started driving because massachusetts the age is 16 and a half my friend who worked in that wilderness survival program i mentioned earlier he had a, a a key that gave him access to a storage unit for his for that program. And what we realized was that our school didn't have a different key for every single lock. They had one key that opened every single lock in the school. Oh. Nice. So me and one of my one of my best friends, and he features in a lot of my hijinks from that time period, we took uh, that that kid sent us to, to run an errand for him. And rather than run that errand, we did that errand as fast as humanly possible and then ran to my car, got in the car, drove as fast as we could to his mother's ex-boyfriend's house, <laughs> who was a locksmith. Now, the key says right on it, illegal to copy. But who cares? He, he, didn't, he didn't care. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he, didn't, he, liked, he liked my friend. He still, you know, he was like, he was kind of been a father figure for a couple of years. He made us copies to the master key for the school. What I use that master key for all four years or the, the remaining, you know, that year and the next two years of high school, I only would poop in the faculty bathrooms after that. <laughs> nice. <laughs> and I got caught. That's amazing. Wait, well, you got caught? I got caught more than once. <laughs> Holy shit. And when they asked... I said the exact same thing, which was, I'm sorry. I couldn't wait another moment. I checked to see if it was unlocked. It happened to be unlocked. And that's why I, that's why I used that bathroom. I didn't think I could make it all the way down to the end of the hall. And they're always like, I okay, I understand, that. but don't, don't, don't do it again. Right. <laughs> the diarrhea card is a serious one that we yeah. all have pulled needed yes we get it i used to have a little card in my wallet that said i have crohn's disease i can't wait please let me use your your employee bathroom <laughs> I love um, that. that's pretty amazing that, 
that for places that didn't have public restrooms. Right, right, right. Wow. And I feel in retrospect, I feel bad about some of these things because I was operating under the assumption that I had like a legitimate handicap. And instead, what it was, was, uh, you know, a uh, misdiagnosis and some questionable. Uh, I yeah, mean, you did nervous. have Crohn's disease, according to a doctor. Yes. Yes. So you weren't lying. Yeah. yeah it wasn't like I was on WebMD and I'm like, no, I think I got you didn't just make that card and be like, I got Crohn's yeah. disease. This is my gift. I got joke. Crohn's disease. Yeah. yeah that's yeah. a good one. Yeah. I think you you're were fine. on medication for it and everything. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 But I love having that master key to the school. Oh my god, that's <laughs> brilliant! That's pretty sweet. Jesus, that that's like every kid's yeah. dream. Like in high school, <laughs> yeah. where you're like, perfect. This bathroom's much better. <laughs> yeah. I feel like and you I can was... make a teen like comedy called Master Key, all about like <laughs> that could be really funny. Getting into the, all the hijinks we could get into, and we did, we did. But generally speaking, I was fairly responsible with it because I didn't want to ever get caught completely yeah. and like have it taken away. Yeah, you know. So like, we didn't like, we never like stole anything or, or did anything stupid. But like, yeah, what was your it, free we, pass to a nice bathroom? Of course, you don't. Yeah, like it's my free pass to a nice bathroom. I was yeah. also a teacher aide, and my teacher, uh, the first thing he taught me to do was how to forge his signature, because <laughs> yeah. it's like uh, you're going to be filling out all the hall passes and stuff. I don't want to do that. You like okay. so I I perpetually had a hall pass in my pocket from the teacher as a teacher aide for, who basically told me like, yeah, as long as you don't do anything dumb, like I'll just vouch for you. Oh, that's so, amazing. I was fine. Yeah, that's amazing. Nice. I had a very Ferris Bueller kind yeah, I was of. Say, uh, you had a pretty good high school experience. That's pretty nice. Yeah, yeah. For the most part, my high school experience was a lot of fun, but except for the you know the fact that I I thought I was perpetually sick. Yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> that that they'll put a crimp in anything. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. our last question and our favorite of the hour, Scott. Sure. If you have Bristol Seven butt pee pee diarrhea coming out of you, just the way you described it when you ate that fried potato, but there's absolutely no bathroom in sight. Do you poop in your pants or somewhere on the floor? Floor. It's floor. <laughs> not not even a not even a moment's hesitation. Floor. <laughs> and has yeah. that happened to you? Oh my god, I have, I have had to go on the sides of roads. I have had to go. I've never had to go in like a mall or something. You know what I mean? Like I've always made, if, if, if I was ever in a building, I'd always managed to make it to a, to, to a facility. I definitely, and actually still to this day, I do keep a roll of toilet paper in my car just in case. Oh, yeah. I never needed to use it, but I'm glad that it's there. But as a, as a kid, yeah, I've, I've, I had to have my primary parent, my mom on one, one, at least one occasion pulled over and I went on the side of the road. And then another time walking back from the bus station, I had a couple of really, or the bus stop I had a couple of really close calls. Oh. The other thing too is I can't emphasize this enough. I lived in the woods. So the distance between my house and the, my bus stop was a good mile. mile oh, wow. Like it was, it was a walk. That is a lot. You know? so, That's a yeah. 20 minute walk. Yeah. Yeah. So like, Sometimes that happened. And if there was no other kids that were between those houses were between my, you know, weren't been ride the bus that day or whatever, then, uh, yeah. So, you know, you're shading off into the, into the woods. So you left your DNA all over those woods. All over those woods. Yeah. yeah it's a good place to be if you guys take a shit. Yeah. Now, what are- and also this, the other thing I liked about growing up in that kind of environment was nature took care of whatever you left outside. Oh yeah. So True. if we had big parties and someone threw up over the side, I don't know, raccoons, coyotes, something came and took care of it for us. It's gone. All the evidence is gone. Yeah. Well, did you have any, have any close calls? Now, let's just say, like, the floor versus pants situation, living in New oh, York yeah, yeah, at yeah. one point. Ever had any, in a sub, it's like subway? That's my yes. best fear. Like, subway, I never, I've never had to have, have to go to the bathroom on the subway. But there's been, like, again, doubled over. Mm hmm like praying that there's no delays kind of kind of <laughs> things and i've had those those very close calls where like i am taking down my pants and as i am getting my ass into the seat you know things have started to arrive before my butt has reached the seat oh yeah yeah you yeah. know like i've, I've had yeah. those kind of photo finish moments many yeah. times in my life <laughs> <laughs> oh you sound God. like a pro at all of this <laughs> <laughs> i had a lot of experience at it yeah, yeah like it's that's the worst <laughs> being in the subway is my biggest fear having to take a shit like yeah. on, or, or sitting pants on the subway oh my oh, god, god. I, I, in subway. <laughs> I stepped into Ooh. a subway train once and uh i thought i was lucky i was really hung over this was college and the doors opened up it's a really packed day 
none of us wanted to work this, 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 my roommate was actually the one who was supposed to work it, but he, his girlfriend had dumped him and he got so drunk that there was no way he could go. So like at like two in the morning, I was told I have to wake up at seven and go film for a friend of ours. So, uh, I am exhausted and the end of a long day of filming, I'm hung over as hell. The doors open and we're crowded platform, crowded train, and there's no one in this car. And we think it's a miracle and we Mm. jump in and then the doors close and then the smell hits us. And there's one homeless gentleman who is either passed out or deceased. And he has completely shit his pants. Just completely like... They, they are two different colors, you know, it's like blue jeans on top <laughs> yeah. and completely brown trousers on the bottom. Oh. And, uh, and it was like the worst smell. And we like raced over to the doors to try to transfer between the cars. And it was like, it was one that couldn't mm-hmm. open for whatever reason. And, uh, I got out and we only had like one stop, two stops. It wasn't that far of a ride, but we were, in, we, we ran over on the next subway car. And as we were running over, we're like, don't go in there, don't go in there, you know, <laughs> and pile into the other car. And when I got out, I told the woman at the, that the, uh, that worked in the booth at West fourth street. Hey, this subway car, this line heading in this direction, fifth car from the front, there's somebody in there and I don't know if they're passed out or dead, but they need medical attention. Somebody has to do something. And she looks at me and goes, the fuck do you want me to do about it? <laughs> yep. There's be a procedure. Please. <laughs> Call dispatch something. You know, Welcome like, to New York. You're, like, you're new Welcome in town, right? You're new in yeah. town, right? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> They're like, oh you're God. a New Yorker now. That's your, your, like, you got, like, your badge, like, you're a scout or a brownie, yeah, you yeah. know, the brownie, you know. That is the, We're that- now, like, thanks to the new mayor of New York, I just rode the subway in and out of the city to get my hair done. Mm-hmm. I saw a cop on every platform every yeah. platform they're everywhere it's yeah. insane yeah. and if you listen to my dad he thinks that guy's anti-police Oof. really yeah oh, crazy. Yeah. yeah florida my dad my dad was a perfectly reasonable man he retired in florida and suddenly oh, really? uh, now he's just like yeah uh, the, the fox news brainwashing cycle oh shit oh god oh my yeah. god Oh, sorry yeah. about that. He, I'm he, sorry. he went from not caring about politics at all to to just quoting Tucker Carlson at me anytime we talk. Ugh. Of course. Yeah. You're like, oh, right. I'm sorry. Time to go. Otherwise, dude. great dad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But but yeah. Oof. Yeah. Oof. Okay. Well, we're gonna play a little game. Sure. We have to call shitty choices. Shitty, shitty choices. choices. So, would you rather lick the bottom of someone's shoe? Or lick the sidewalk, a New York City sidewalk. Oof! <laughs> Isn't that the hmm. same thing? <laughs> it's, it's, it's roughly equivalent. Yeah, I guess the shoe seems like more if, personal. If someone else chose the square, but I could choose the spot on the sidewalk, I might go sidewalk. Yeah, I'm gonna go. With, oh, sorry, Ellen. <laughs> No, I want to hear what you're going to do, Dave. I can't make a decision. Oh, I was going to say sidewalk too because the shoe is too. A shoe. Look, they both. They both suck. They both. Terrible leave, decision. There's both things stuck to that to those surfaces that like you can't. But yeah. it's something just growing up stepping in dog shit and you try to get the whole thing out. It always gets stuck in those crevices of your sneaker or shoe. I'm going to go with sidewalks. I feel like I can pick a spot, maybe like exactly what Scott's thing. I'm going to pick an area that doesn't look as bad. It's, it's yeah. gonna be bad. I'm gonna go Whereas the shoe is just the, the shoe, average of everything it's so it's stepped per, on. Yeah, it's so personal. It's so just like whose shoe? I, mm. it, it could be anybody's yeah, shoe. That's a good point. Look, it's yeah. we've all been walking around, so you know. I don't know. I can't think of anybody's shoe. Really, it doesn't really matter. Gerald's shoe. No, I don't want either. But <laughs> if I'm I'm listening to your train of thought. And if you could pick a piece of the sidewalk that maybe it's just rained, sure, yeah, I mean, I'll do sidewalk. But no, they're both to me they're equal, equal. They're equal, but the, the shoe, evil. the shoe to me sounds like I just it's just more like I don't know, I don't know. I did I no, shoot the sidewalk is actually worse, but psychologically it seems better. Exactly. <laughs> Yeah, and like my neighbor, the the guy that takes care of the building next to ours, he hoses that thing down like every morning. So 
I'm going by that. Like maybe someone will be hosing it down like in the morning. (laughs) Yeah. Probably not. And that's not going to do anything. But (laughs) I mean, like the amount of dogs that shit Mm -hmm. and the loogies, the people. Yeah. Just puke. Just all kinds of stuff. Used gum. And now I'm sick. Yeah. 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 I don't know. Just think about the shoe. Because I just think, oh, yeah, I don't know. It's they're both horrible. So, okay. We're going with three three for sidewalk. (laughs) Yeah, gross. (laughs) Where do you generate these from? His, my, my his dumb little head. cute head. Uh, that, 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 was, that was like the that I gotta make some new ones. That was the last. I made a big batch, and that was the last one. So I gotta, I gotta start doing some new ones. But that was mm. the last one I had, and I was like, oh, I forgot about this one. Oof, um, yeah, it's pretty gross. I was gonna do something like with George Santos and <laughs> another congressional awful person, but I was like, that's just too easy. I don't wanna. But anyway, we're getting into a little news today. <laughs> So Ellen sent this to me today, which I thought was really funny. German ballet director formally apologizes for smearing feces in critics' face. This is uh, (laughs) Associated Press, February 14th, 2023. Martin Goecki, I'm hopefully pronouncing that correctly, issued an apology on Tuesday for smearing dog feces on the face of a newspaper critic whose reviews he did not like. That's insane. Yes. I mean, what's it's insane, f- but you know. But uh, is this in Germany, right? <laughs> yeah, yes, yeah. this is in Germany. I guess you can get away with that shit in Germany. <laughs> Apparently not, because he was suspended. He was suspended uh, well, from his post wait. as the ballet chief. He should be arrested. Oh, it's a. You know, I'm, I somehow missed that it's the ballet chief. That does make it crazier. <laughs> ballet director, German ballet director in yeah. Hanover. If it was um, some art filmmaker, they'd be like, "Yeah, that tracks." Yeah, <laughs> ballet. <laughs> Definitely. Also in Germany. Poop. Also, yeah. just the Tracks. thought of getting that angry and being like, I'm taking some dog shit. Like, I mean, it's it's fucking crazy. I mean, you yourself are also touching that dog shit, too. Yeah, I mean, yeah. he's like, you know what? I don't give a fuck. I'm just I'm getting my revenge. Basically, this guy approaches dance critic Webke Hustor during an interval at a premiere at an opera house and then asked what she was doing. And then I guess he just like, blam, right into her face. <laughs> oh! God, oh Our my face, God! Too. There's I mean, some layers here. And yeah, he, and he wrote, I "Quote: I would like to apologize sincerely to all concerned. First and foremost, to Miss Houston <laughs> for my absolutely unacceptable act." I'm like, dude, you knew it was. Come on, if you're going that far, like you know, walking in, he was. You need some anger management. He, the fact that he's like, also, that unless the dog shit was right there, there had to be malice of forethought, right? Like he had oh, to yes. plan 100%. this out. He's like, yeah. what can I do here? I apologize for the fact that I finally, <laughs> finally blew my top. <laughs> but I also asked for a certain understanding, at least for the reasons why this happened. Give me a fucking break. No, no. Nope. That's bullshit. Nope. Nope. I could see. Well, like, dog shit. But yes. <laughs> yeah. That's dog shit. Exactly. So it's just, it's just, it's insane. No, it's there's just, no reason. Yeah. I mean, he read this review, okay. let it stew, and then like actually got the dog shit and then approached her and did it. So he was like, just. He was at a 10 and anger yeah. like for a long time before he saw her. No. So completely unacceptable, really fucked up. But, you know, we got to cover it because it is news and it, it involves shit. I think we got to read the review, find out what exactly was said. <laughs> I wish they had it. Before, I wish before they we had judge it this man. The I mean, review is don't bother with this ballet. Could you, it's yeah. shit. Could you imagine? Could you imagine? <laughs> could you imagine if we all read it? Well, oh, I see his point. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're like, actually, he did have a. Okay. I get like, it. You know what? Yeah, I get yeah. it. You know? <laughs> It was a little I'm so completely funny. oh my god. Yeah, really disgraceful and disgusting and it's just fucking crazy. But on this show we have to report it because yeah. it is the news. It. it involves feces <laughs> and like on on Huffington Post where, where they got the link from, it just says weird news, Berlin feces. <laughs> <laughs> Do you need to know any more? And now I'm clicking on feces and it's just like everything else, like the um New York Post. Tons of stories. <laughs> Tons and oh, tons God. and tons of stories. Oh my God. This is actually well, great. Got for, a, you've got a new bank. Oh yeah. No, there's some stuff in here. One mom raises a stink after Amazon allegedly allegedly delivers dirty diapers. <laughs> oh, I gotta my hear God. about that one. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. Oh my god. Hey my my new iPads here. <laughs> oh <Nope>. no. <laughs> oh god. All right, well, 
Scott. Wait, was it so? What? Uh-huh. No, sorry, go on. Oh, no, I just just wanted a clarification. If like she had ordered diapers and got dirty diapers. <laughs> you- I mean, I just looked at I think she ordered something that makes she was shocked to see a, a pair sense. of diapers covered in what appeared to be fecal matter when she opened up her Amazon package. No. Yep, that is, it does strike me as an oversight. You might just see that, that's like a disgruntled worker who wants to like clearly start a union, but Amazon's like such assholes about it. Or some weird third party psycho <laughs> seller. <Yeah. laughs> But we'll get to we'll or find a malfun- malfunctioning robot that went into the like, <laughs> yeah, exactly the trash right. can. When, yeah, hmm, insert feces into this package. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, you know, you got to tune in maybe next week to find out the uh, spine tingling conclusion. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Oh my god. But anyway, Scott Hazelton, thank you so much for being on our show. Hey, my pleasure. You are the best. I was really happy you. that you're here uh, with us to share some funny stuff and you know what's yeah. going on. And, and Peter. this is our part of the show where we ask if you want to plug anything. I don't know if you do. Mm-hmm. Do you want I to mean, plug your wife? Yeah. Speaking of speaking of Berlin, if you're uh, going to be anywhere near Winter Garden on March, uh, I think twelfth and thirteenth or eleventh and twelfth, uh, my wife will be performing at the Winter Garden in Berlin, Hazel Honeysuckle, and uh, and then actually, if you look her up. Uh, yeah, we're going to be traveling around Europe for a couple of weeks, and she's going to be performing in, in Bern, Switzerland, and Rome. She's going to be perform, performing in uh, to Treviso. She's going to be performing in uh, uh, Berlin, and I feel like I've missed one. But <laughs> I should mail you some of our Hey Poopy stickers to put up around Please. Europe. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Excellent. Especially in Berlin. It seems like it's appropriate. Yeah, I did great. try to pull up real quick that story. I haven't found. I have not found the review yet. Well, but, if you uh, do find it, please keep I us posted. I'll forward it to you if I find it. Oh my god! Yes. Please, yeah. yeah, we'll do a, we'll do a follow up. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thanks for laughing, learning everything, but with us. And happy pooping, everybody, and enjoy your butthole. <laughs> For more info, go to heypoopypodcast.com or email us at heypoopypodcast at gmail.com. You can send in show ideas, guest requests. Check us out on Twitter at heypoopy, Instagram at heypoopypodcast, TikTok, heypoopypodcast, and our awesome new Facebook fan page. Go check it out at heypoopypodcast. We're also on Discord at heypoopydumps, or you can contact us at our new awesome hotline. 203-998-5579. Hey Poopy Podcast is brought to you by Perfect for Entertainment. Produced by Dave and Ellen. Edited by Dave. Executive producer Stormy Leather. Theme song by Jordan Pearlson. Hey Poopy.